proper brace height for your crossbow. That is this episode of Death by Bungie. There's no intro sequence. I'm just going to go straight into the video, I guess, this time. We'll scrap the intro sequence for this video, at least, and we will proceed to talk about brace heights for your crossbow. In front of me here, as you can see, as I usually do on these crossbow-related videos, is Bungie. Bungie's all set up a 2010 Excalibur Axiom in all of its glory, all set up here. I've been doing quite a bit of shooting with this, more than normal for this time of year. I'm making this video in early July, so it's not really the heavy season for me for shooting, but it is the getting ready to be the crossbow season here, and that's the reason I'm making more crossbow-related videos at this time. Let's start this video by discussing what brace height is. Let's define that concept. Brace height, traditionally in traditional bows, with your long bows, your compound bows, that sort of thing, it's typically measured by the distance between your hand and the string. That's the kind of thing that we're talking about here, the handle and the string. On a crossbow where you have a riser, that's the part of the crossbow that's holding the limbs are bolted to, and then that riser, of course, is bolted to the barrel of the crossbow. That This is the barrel here. And then you have a shooting rail connected that sort of ends at the riser. We're simply measuring the distance between the riser, where the riser ends and the rail begins, and your string. Now, some people get real technical about this. Some people want to know, well, are we measuring to the inside of the string? Are we measuring to this side of the string? How are we going to measure that? I'm not as concerned about that, really, as so long as you measure it the same way every time. And in fact, with my crossbow, I'm really not concerned with it at all because the brace height for me I just want it to be the same every time that I'm using the crossbow. On the shooting rail of Bungie here, you can see that there's two marks, and the recommendation from the manufacturer for ideal performance for this crossbow is going to be to keep that brace height somewhere between those two marks. Very easy to do. You simply line it up, leave it there, and you're good to go. It's important to keep an eye on your brace height because if your string loosens a little bit and the brace height gets a little shallower, gets a little shorter, a lower brace height, well, that's going to have an impact on the accuracy. It's going to change the flight of the arrow a little bit. Similarly, if you tighten it up a little bit and you've got it back farther, that will change the point of impact of your arrows slightly. It can also affect the speed, as I will discuss in this video a little bit later on. So you do have to keep an eye on brace height. Now, if you don't have these marks on your shooting rail, then find out from your manufacturer what their recommended brace height is, and then measure it properly, and try and keep your string in that area. If you don't have the marks on the shooting rail, you're just going to take a little black sharpie, make little marks on the side of the shooting rail, and that way you'll know essentially where that string is supposed to be. Every time you go out to shoot, if you're off a little bit, you look at those marks, and if you're not on those marks, maybe that's the reason that your crossbow's off a little bit. It could also be the scope, a number of other things. But you're going to want to keep an eye on those marks. When you're hunting, make sure that your string is lined up with those marks. Keeping the same consistent brace height, in my opinion, is more important than keeping your brace height in a certain spot. It's keeping it the same way every time. That's more important for consistent accuracy, consistent arrow flight, than setting up your brace height with a shorter brace height or a longer brace height. Now, why do we care about brace height? What changes the string? Does the crossbow change or what, what goes on here? Essentially, the string's not really moving. It's not even really stretching. We do refer to that as string stretch. It seems like the string gets a little bit longer. That relaxes your limbs a little bit, and that'll make your brace height shorter. It'll shorten up your brace height. It'll move that string down the shooting rail a little closer to the riser. Similarly, if you put on a brand new string, it's a little tighter, maybe you got it ratcheted up, a lot of twists in it, whatever the case may be, and it may have increased the brace height, it's increased the distance from the riser to the string. Now the strings are made of non-stretchable material. Really, they aren't, they don't stretch very much. I mean, a brand new string, maybe there's gonna be a little bit of stretch in it depending on the material, depending on the manufacturer, that sort of thing. But really, generally speaking, the strings do not stretch. When we talk about the strings getting a little bit longer, Really what's happening over time is that the oils that are on that, that material that they use, the wax that might be between those fibers, starts to evaporate, dry up a little bit. And that allows the string to compress in on itself a little bit more under all of this tension because there's a lot of tension on these crossbows. And as that happens, it will 
basically give the string the ability to be a little, become a little bit longer. Again, the fibers haven't really stretched all that much, but the overall length of the string will increase because there's less stuff in there that has to be compressed. To combat that, this is a recurve crossbow. I'm able to take the string off, put the string back on, do all that work myself. When I do that, I typically will unravel the string a little bit, make sure I apply a real good coat of wax, and then wrap it back up, and then put the string back on. Typically, when I put the string back on this crossbow, as long as I'm between those two marks, generally speaking, it's going to shoot pretty accurate. It's going to be pretty close to where it was before. It'll only take a tweak or two on the scope in order to get right back on the bullseye. I have two strings that I use on this, two of the Flemish strings, and I rotate them back and forth as the servings get a little bit worn out. I take it to a shop, get it reserved, and then I just put on the other string, and I always have a backup string, just like my chainsaw. If the chain gets dull, I switch out into another chain, take the other one to the shop, and get it sharpened, so I always have a, a backup. My dad always used to say, the spare tire in your car was the most important tire that you have. Being, and if you doubt that, go get a flat tire and see how important that spare becomes. That's one of the reasons I like the recurve crossbows. No problem whatsoever with people shooting compound crossbows to each his own. If that crossbow is serving your purpose and allowing you to get out in the woods, enjoy crossbow hunting, then it's a great crossbow to have. The strings aren't really stretching. They're not getting longer. It's really, the, I think a better term is string creep. Why is that string creeping down the shooting rail toward the riser a little bit? It's really string creep, which is decreasing your brace height over time. If you have your crossbow properly tuned and you take it to a shop and you get a good string on it, that won't be too much of an issue going forward, but it does frustrate a lot of people. With the recurves, again, I can pop that string off, put a new string on real easy. I can always put another twist or two in it if need be to, to increase that brace height if I want to. And I try to keep it in the same uh, area all the time. Generally speaking, I try to keep it in the middle between the two marks, okay? I don't care one way or another as long as it's sort of in the middle. If it gets too far to the front, then I got to go sight it in and make sure it's still shooting accurate. And if it gets, you know, if it was farther back, I'd have to make sure I was still accurate. But if I keep it in the middle, generally speaking, the crossbow is accurate throughout the season. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing. This is where you might see a little bit of debate among crossbow shooters as to the effect of brace height on performance. Does it make your crossbow faster or slower? And in fact, brace height does affect the speed of your crossbow. The traditional thinking has been that if you have a shorter brace height, in other words, the string is farther down the shooting rail closer to the riser, a shorter brace height will give you a faster arrow flight, faster arrow speed, than a greater brace height. Now, the thinking behind that has always been that the shorter brace height means that the arrow has a longer period of contact with the string because you've increased the power stroke distance between the string where it is cocked and the string where it comes to rest up toward the riser, where your brace height stops, right? Where your brace height is measured. That string at rest versus the string when cocked, that's your power stroke. If you increase the power stroke, generally speaking, you're increasing the speed of the arrow. So a shorter brace height gives you a longer power stroke and therefore a faster arrow. Some people have argued that the reverse is true, that a greater brace height, a tighter string, puts more emphasis on the limbs, increases the draw weight of the bow because you got more tension on it, and that greater amount of tension is pushing the arrow forward faster because it's imparting more energy on the arrow. Now, I had said in a previous video that a shorter brace height equated with a faster arrow, and a greater brace height would result in a slower arrow. And I got kind of a snarky comment from somebody saying, you should do more research because a greater brace height, it's proven that a greater brace height actually increases the speed of the arrow. So before I went and made this video, I bought a chronograph. I actually put up a little chronograph in the yard there, set it all up, shot at it this morning, and I put the brace height all the way forward, shot it there, and then I reset the string so that it was a greater brace height all the way back staying within those marks, staying within the manufacturer's recommendations as to where the brace height is safest for the crossbow. But I shot it all the way forward and I shot it all the way back. And the results of that shooting show that a shorter brace height creates a faster arrow. It does. So the traditional thinking is accurate. 
The reason for this is pretty simple. The brace height does not change the draw weight of those limbs, the weight that those limbs can compress, the power behind those limbs. You haven't changed the limbs. You've only changed the tension of the string. The maximum draw weight that's going to propel that arrow has not changed whatsoever. All you have done is increase the tension on the limbs when the bow is at rest, not when it's fully cocked. So it turns out I was right all along. At least as far as my crossbow is concerned, this recurve crossbow is concerned, it is a fact that a shorter brace height with the string moved toward the riser creates a faster arrow than a greater brace height with the string moved back up the shooting rail toward the trigger mechanism. Just to tell you exactly what it was, I wrote down the numbers as I was shooting. With the string all the way forward, the brace height all the way forward, I had three shots. They averaged, they were 302, 305, and 299, okay? So Bungie's supposed to shoot 305 with this setup. That's the thing. And in, interestingly enough, 305 was the fastest of all the arrows that I shot. So according to the chronograph, you know, and they can fluctuate, sure, I'm, I'm sure of that. But they were shooting 302, 305, and 299 feet per second with the string all the way forward. And with the string back, all the way back, it shot at 298, 299, and 300. Did not break 300, it only got to 300. So with those three shots, with the string all the way back, I'm averaging about 299. With the string all the way forward, I'd say I'm, I'm averaging about 302. So I actually, by moving the string all the way back, I lost three feet per second. Now, three feet per second, if you're hunting comes down to the difference of three feet per second, then you've got bigger things to worry about than brace height or your crossbow or anything else. The faster arrow shouldn't make any difference in the end. That three feet per second or so that I can get out of this crossbow doesn't even make me want to push it farther forward or farther back. The brace height, leave it in the middle where I feel safe, where the bow is performing consistently and safely. That's really what I want. I will continue to have the string sort of in the middle between the two marks totally acceptable for me. The extra one or two feet per second is not going to make any difference in the hunting with this crossbow. Keeping in mind, of course, that brace height can affect accuracy. If your brace height's all the way forward, I did some tests last summer shooting at 30 yards. It did fluctuate. I was shooting as much as two inches different with the brace height in one position versus the other position. And I will address brace height and its effect on accuracy in a future video. I'm going to do a video this summer about some more tips for maintaining consistent accuracy and tuning in your crossbow. And while we're talking about accuracy, here's another thing to consider. If your crossbow is not shooting consistently accurate, what I mean by that is to the point where if you shoot at the same spot on the target each time, you can't shoot until you've removed the arrow. Because if I shoot at the same spot, I'm going to clip that arrow. That's how accurate this thing is out to 20, maybe even 30 yards. There's a good chance I'm going to hit an arrow if I shoot at the same spot the second time. And you don't want to do that. So I work my way across the target when I do. I usually shoot three arrows, one, two, three, pull them, one, two, three, that kind of thing. If you're not getting consistent accuracy out of your crossbow, you may want to look at brace height as a possible solution. If you've got it all the way to front, okay, a short brace height, that will decrease your accuracy on some crossbows. And it, I, don't, I haven't seen much difference here in terms of feeling comfortable with the consistency. But faster crossbows, if you're pushing your crossbow to its upper limit, you are increasing the chances that it's going to have some problems maintaining consistent accuracy. So slow it down a little bit, you might be happier with it. Again, if you're only losing a few feet per second, it should make no difference in your hunting. Consistency is what's really going to kill deer. That's what's really going to help you be successful if you're going hunting with your crossbow. That's what's going to help you if you're just target shooting, consistently hit the same spot on the target and keeping that crossbow accurate. Pull that brace height back a little bit, tighten that string just a little bit to increase that brace height, and you might solve your consistency problems when it comes to accuracy. And if you have a compound crossbow with the wheelies on it and all that good stuff, if you have a crossbow such as that, you certainly can have brace height adjusted. Take it to a shop and have that done unless you really know what you're doing. Go get that done and they can adjust the brace height for you. It is still an issue for compound crossbows. And the last thing that I can tell you about brace height is its effect on volume. Does brace height affect how loud the crossbow is? And the answer to that is, yeah, a little bit. 
<laughs> just very little. I actually bought a little decibel meter and that's going to be part of a future video here where I will address brace height and its effect on the volume of your crossbow. So make sure you subscribe for that. I'm doing a video down the road about quieting your crossbow. Okay, to wrap this up, just remember the big takeaway here is that brace height consistency is the name of the game in my opinion. Sticking with what your manufacturer recommends is the number one thing to remember as far as I am concerned when it comes to brace height. And I will also tell you that once again, I can't say this enough, accuracy is number one when it comes to crossbow hunting. Make sure that your crossbow is accurate. Make sure that it's consistently accurate. And brace height is part of the way, part of the equation to make sure that that happens. I hope you found this video informative. I hope it helps you. I hope it answers some questions you may have about brace height. Uh, I thank you very much for watching it. Bungie, Bungie thanks you for watching it. And until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie. The second state is number one in my book. <laughs>